Once upon a time, our three heroes were reunited on a quest to search for Celius, the mysterious... Hi guys, and welcome back to Switch Up. A big thanks to all of you who have subscribed recently. We will be giving away a few random games here and there. You'll notice in our recent sales video, I think I gave around about 40 copies of Robonauts just to random comments. So make sure you've got your notifications and all that jazz switched on. The Trine series dates all the way back to 2009 and it's a side-scrolling action puzzle platformer with a heavy emphasis on physics-based puzzles and cooperation between a team of up to four players. However, if you've not got a group to tag along for the ride, it also includes several handy ways to make solo play or even remote play just as fun. Is this a series that maybe I should have been playing all along? Let's find out. It began as a simple quest to retrieve a missing prince was now turning into a... The story surrounds a rather irritating young Prince Celius, adept in the magical arts, who bites off more than he can chew, and as such, the magical council deem fit to have you bring him in, Dog the Bounty Hunter style. What ensues is a rat race style adventure to intercept and apprehend him before he unleashes the full darkness his meddlings have awoken. It takes on a much darker tone than the previous titles, with the excellently narrated sections once again elevating proceedings. It was just a nightmare. You control one of a trio of characters, Amadeus, Pontius, and Zoya, who each have unique skills and abilities. Amadeus, the wizard, has the ability to summon large blocks, which can be manipulated and positioned to aid in traversal or environmental exploration. He begins his adventure as one of the weakest of the characters, but due to the leveling system, will learn a range of new skills and abilities to make him far more than the Discworld rinse window like he begins. You'll be slamming blocks and teleporting in no time. Second up in this merry band of misfits is the dwarfish looking knight Pontius. With his large shield and sword, he's able to act as the tank of the group, deflecting incoming projectiles, ground pounding his way to new areas, or simply slashing through enemies. While a touch on the rotund side, he is, as all the characters are, surprisingly agile. The final character, and my favourite of the three, for a few reasons, is the thief Zoya. An entirely honest entrepreneur would perhaps have chosen a door for their exit. She carries a bow which can be upgraded to include a range of different arrow types, as well as a grapple of sorts, allowing her to swing from object to object in the world, but also tie items together, which will be familiar for anyone who's played the Just Cause games, thus creating platforms or rope bridges your party can then traverse with ease. There's a real sense of freedom about the way Zoya moves, and you'll be stringing through jump swings and generally just flowing your way through a stage as her. Plus, she loves all things shiny, so we share that. The stages are incredibly detailed. I'd seen some footage of the games previous, but have been immensely impressed at the scope of the levels. And in practice, it's equally impressive how tight the core concepts are working together. Essentially, you're operating in a physics-based world to overcome each obstacle you encounter and traverse the stage via any means you can think of. All the while, you'll be collecting these little shinies to level up your characters. I've always been a fan of physics being used in games since the early days of PC, when the Havoc physics engine first made its debut. For me, they add a real sense of fun to a game, the unpredictable predictable, if you will, and developer Frozen Byte have created a seamless feeling experience. Every element feels slick and polished. Puzzles are usually overcome by one member of a party having the eureka moment, but will often require the cooperative efforts of all members to succeed. While the game is more than playable and fun in solo mode, with a very quick and easy player switching mechanic, it definitely excels with a group of friends. Levels are designed in such a way that new mechanics feel organic, as you overcome initial tutorial-style implementations of skills and then are expected to naturally apply this new learning to your play throughout the rest of the stage, and it works very well. The combat has seen some revisions, and at certain points in a stage, arena-style barriers will come up and enemies spawn in around you. This works for a number of reasons. It means that throughout the other times, your party can focus solely on the puzzle platforming without fear of an enemy interrupting that flow. While it gives a stronger emphasis on the warrior class being used as well, as his shield deflection and stomp become pivotal in some fights. One minor criticism could be leveled at the simplicity of the combat, but even this becomes more complex as your characters learn new skills and abilities. Boss fights once again rely on the different abilities of your motley crew. If one player goes down, they'll revive after a period of time. 
meaning that if you can survive with the remaining characters, then the show can go on. The scale of these is impressive, and even the initial fight against a hideous dog monster was just challenging enough and used almost all members of the party. From a control standpoint, they've done a cracking job as well aided by the visuals, but I'll cover that in the coming section. Aiming with the right stick with Zoya feels intuitive and creating platforms from ice, flinging large stones to break through walls, or traversing large distances and just reaching the edge before pulling yourself up all feel great. My only criticism of the game are some slightly unusual results when handling physical objects. It could have been intentional, but at times the physical laws seem to be entirely broken. As the wizard, you can position and place items, manipulating them in the air and rotating them before placing them back down. I found a few occasions where items should have dropped, but they just hung in the air, attached by a hair's whisker. Yes, it was good from a gameplay standpoint because I could progress without tearing my hair out, but it defeated the point of the physical world rules a little. Gameplay is excellent. I'd not really played the series before, and judging from what I hear and have heard of those titles, much has been done to make this a real return to form. You can easily jump online and team up with friends, or enjoy the whole experience locally, and although this review has focused on maybe group play, it is definitely just as fun on your own. Gameplay scores 18 out of 20, while the controls also score 18 out of 20. They are excellent, bar a couple of strange physical mishaps affecting the momentum at times. Visually, the game is nothing short of stunning. Running at a consistent 30 frames per second, the world looks ripped right out of a Grimm's fairy tale. Character animation is particularly good, and when I first staggered my way down the snowy mountain, running Jack Sparrow style as the wizard, I couldn't quite believe my eyes. Check that out, I said to my wife, showing her the screen in my handheld switch. Oh, that's good, is it? She replied. <sighs> she doesn't understand. As you can see from the handheld footage, it is running beautifully, and any past accusations of visual repetition have been well and truly debunked with this game. Almost moment to moment, the visual palette is changing. Your head underground see a castle, venture through ice and snow, all the while visual story cues will be happening, like the prince making his way through the gardens in the background. There are touches of influence from titles like Clockwork Knight and perhaps Guyana Sisters, and in terms of visuals, this gives the masterful Raymond Legends a run for its artistic money. Then there's the music, and series veteran, Ari Polkinen makes a welcome return with his signature style, as seen in titles such as Nine Parchments and of course the others in the Trine series. The fantastical setting with darker undertones lends itself to a slightly different soundtrack. Ari has embraced the setting and character and the attention to detail in the audio palette of the game is exceptional, even down to the characters having their own theme music of sorts. Some of the loops are a touch shorter than I would have liked, and that's really the only and incredibly minor flaw that I can see in audio. Sound effects are good and everything reacts with an audio cue when manipulated. Visuals score 19 out of 20. The only critique I can level here is that the Switch has a tiny, and I mean tiny amount of blur at times, but I'm really reaching here. Other than that, it looks fantastic. Audio scores 18 out of 20. It's great, and despite a couple of tracks becoming a touch repetitive, it does an excellent job. The game costs £29.99, €34.99, or $29.99. A little bit strange there. In terms of value, the game offers around 8 to 12 hours of gameplay and includes, for pre orders, an extra little nugget in the form of an extra mission involving a rather awesome little dog from Nine Parchments. I'll let you discover that one. Many may worry that this game is for co op only and potentially avoid it just as they may be a touch lacking in the, uh, friend department. But fear not, while I played through a good chunk to focus on co-op in the review, I also played a lot in solo behind the scenes and found it worked just as well. A difficult thing to pull off with this style of game. The physical release of 4 on Switch will set you back around £5 more on the Nintendo Switch, which is irritating, but... Having said that, the Trine Ultimate Collection is also available and includes all of the games and is the same price across all platforms. However, only four is on the cartridge and the rest are download codes, an irritating practice that I do not at all endorse. Trine 4 though is an excellent game, full of tight platform puzzling and the ability to play locally and online can only add to that value. For me, overall value scores 17 out of 20. What's so urgent about getting this? Trine 4 is an exceptionally well-made game. A truly wonderful title to play and experience. 
It has its flaws, as do all games, but as far as creating an immersive and enjoyable piece of art, optionally cooperative, it really excels. It scores a switch up score of 90%, well worth your time. Thanks to everyone who supported the channel. Remember, please leave a comment down below and let us know what you thought of the review. And a big thank you to our patrons who support the channel each and every month. If you want to join them, you can do so from as little as a dollar. All the info and guff is right down there in the description. For all things switch, all the time, keep it switch up. Cheers guys, see ya!